I legit, I, I know we're not back on yet. I legit thought, Dan, we were on the air and you were just walking out. Like, I'm not going to be a part of this fucking segment. I was like, God damn it. Just I like, did a whole bit. Just let you two okay. brawl. What's up, Mike? Yeah, okay. Now I know his game plan going in. Uh, yeah, I mean. You showed your cards, man. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> But I'm still with you. I mean, we're talking about lying no, and stealing. Tell me when we're on the air. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that was Nick Wright yelling at us. Just tell me when we're on the air. He comes in here. He's uh, Tell me what's happening here. He steals your thing, I mean, and now he's I didn't us. steal a goddamn thing. Yeah. Not a thing. I've stolen one thing from this show. <laughs> Greg Cody's back in my day. That a boy. And I credited him for it. Mm -hmm. If Hey, here, here's how you know I've stolen from a meme. If a team that's going to win the championship, I call the worst team to ever make the finals, that's a mean take. <laughs> that's his property. Here's how you know we all I have haven't properties. stolen from a mean. When I am advertising something and talking about it so for months, if I'd stolen something, I would try to do it in the shadows. So here's my question, I mean, because I don't know if you're serious or not. If you are serious, I am wounded. I am hurt. I am I am upset. If you're not, then so be it. I have been talking about this on the show for months. It was it was an organic bit because I thought too many people were being called superstars. I said it's got to be treated like a nightclub, one in, one out. There's, you can't have, call Trey Young a superstar and Anthony Edwards superstar. Too many. It's a set number. Why am I just now hearing from you on it? Why why yesterday was the first day you raised the objections? I think I have an idea. Tell me your idea. I mean, tell me what I idea yesterday you had. It was the first day you found out that I was doing it. Is that correct? That it is was the correct. The first day you became aware. Of that it. is correct. Okay. Yesterday was the first so, day you became aware. So it's possible someone in the sports media ecosystem could be talking about something or doing something and it not come across your radar for months. So is it not possible to you, with all due respect, to the great radio show you and Zach Harper do, that I might not be a daily listener? To where I didn't know you guys did a vaguely similar Not what do you what did you say was MVP bar? To the superstar club, is that not possible? Not at all. First of all, those, that's not stand. vaguely what? similar what? when happening? you just adjusted a couple of words. It's the same thing. Like wow. bar and club are substitutes. Wow. MVP and superstar huh. are kind of substitutes. And it's not something that we did once years ago. Wow. We've done it continuously, not only on Sirius XM NBA Radio, where you can catch me 10 to 1 Eastern weekdays, and also on Sundays with Jason Jackson, 10 to 1 Eastern. Right. Well done. Right here. Mm -hmm. Jay Jackson. Yeah, and by day. the way, and, and by the way, Amin, I will say this. I, I've listened to your show, because unlike the show on NBA Radio with Justin Termine or whoever, you guys have good takes. You guys have cogent analysis. I like it. But I, I did not take this from you. I would not take something like this and then pay an artist to create a painting to make it as big as possible. And this is where I have an issue with the shipping container crew. This is where I have an issue with the social media team. And not, not Juju. Juju, you and you I are missing. You, you better not have a problem I, with I'm Juju. Not, I'm not, I'm <laughs> you not. know better. You However, know better. I watched this video yesterday. And the video shows the painting that at Pure Hoop on Twitter made. And while Amin is talking about his MVP bar, you guys then showed an image of the Lebetard Show Club, which has similar coloring, which makes it seem like Amin's MVP bar had an image associated with it that looks like the club. That's misleading. That's bad journalism. I would expect more from you, Mr. Dan Lebetard, Whoa. than to have under your uh, stewardship people you know, a little fake newsy stuff going I, on. Look, I the was, colors were look, similar. I was and that totally, you can take up with the great Nick artist Wright, who did it. Go Nick ahead. Nick Wright, I was totally okay when uh, and this poor Justin Termain uh, took us stray. Mm -hmm. But you will not. My, my, journal no that, my journalism way. is not going to take us stray because our club, which was years in advance of whatever your imaging years. is, Years, MVP club, yeah, uh, is is Super different. Club. It's it's mm. I I see a lot of similarities, and when you're someone who has followed what it is that we do around here, I tend to side with Amin when he oh my god when he accuses you of being a grifter. I stand with you, I, Nick. I stand with stealing. I have a question. I didn't steal this. I I first of all, I might be a grifter, but not in this instance. 
<laughs> I did not take a means idea. And I don't think this is not a Levitar show a thing. This is, a, 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 from what I understand, an Amin and Zach Harper thing. It, this isn't being talked about on Basketball Illuminati. You would too much time on Basketball Illuminati explaining to us how we're stupid if we think Marcus Smart's a good defensive player. That actually, when you crunch the numbers, all right, have a stroll That's enough. True. Enough. We get it. You understand basketball better than all of us. Except I think he's pretty good at defense. That, but that I didn't steal from Amin on this. I've had cocktails with Amin. I bought Amin a, a, a meal once. Wow. I wouldn't steal from him. I used to think we were friends. Then I get attacked. I get attacked for no reason. And by the way, since Dan is now, I'm shocked, appalled, dismayed that Dan is siding with Amin on this. Go ahead, Amin. Well, Nick, I'll, I have, I'll, I say, I'll say that first ahead. of all, I still consider us to be friends. Wow. This is my proof to the well, world that even my, friends, even my friends can get it. No. Even my friends will be held accountable. Really? I hold everybody accountable. Mm. You know why? Because I am an unbiased observer. Wow. When I see wrong, I point it out, even okay. when it happens to those I love and hold wow. dear to me. Wow. Which I once did to, wow. to Nick Wright until he stabbed me in the back. Wow. And just with I these do. lies. And Billy, Billy has a question. I have a question, yeah. Oh, don't you do, so, Billy. They're not lies. <laughs> What's up, Billy? So, so Nick says that his is one in, one out. Is yours one in, one out? I'm not going to discuss <laughs> Wait a minute. the mechanics of my MVP bar. We need to. That's the whole idea. Yeah. We need no, to. No, that's I mean. the, look, let that's me tell you something. That's the whole reason. Let's, it's my thing. The, the whole... Go ahead. No, I'm going to say that Eric Spolster has a great saying that he inherited from Pat Riley, which is, let's keep the main thing the Pat main Riley thing. He stole saying. from yeah. Pat Riley. That's true. Yeah. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. Billy wants to go off on, like, these traipses no, out I into the just, fields, like, oh, la, 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 what's that butterfly doing hey. over there? No, the main <laughs> thing. The main thing is the main thing, and the main thing is oh. the superstar club, oh. which sounds like, you know what? We guys know when you go to Walgreens, you're like, I need to get some Zyrtec, and it's, like, $16, and then you see yeah. Waltec right next to it for four dollars yeah, like, that's yeah. what that's what nick wright did Love he basically it. just slightly adjusted the name and sold it for a lot cheaper wow. and said oh, that wow. is not what happened <laughs> and, and, and billy thank you billy this is why you're a great uh, human being undervalued member of the team and the next time you want to go see uh miguel cabrera hit a milestone i'll pay your way my friend don't worry about them i got your back billy <laughs> has he uh, hit the 600th double the yet he has yeah, there, there are no other milestones that was well <laughs> done by you nick <laughs> <I mean. laughs> there's there's no the, the whole idea is if you're going to call someone a superstar you have to then remove someone so to let jason tatum in we had to kick anthony davis out the fact that your bar doesn't have that to me, I, I rest my case. But now I have to come at Levitard because Levitard is sided with Amin here. And Levitard also had a very interesting quote yesterday. I'm going to read directly from Twitter. Nick Wright is a known grifter and gambler. Dirty person. That's the quote. I'm just curious how our great friends at DraftKings would feel about you, you sullying the names of gamblers, calling me a dirty person because I happen to place a parlay or two, a sports wager or two. Fair I point. wonder how that how that resonates with them, my friend. I, dirty um, person. I, uh, I owe DraftKings, but not you, an apology. I uh, should have mentioned, I lost a word, a dishonest gambler is what I meant to say. I'm not, not, not an honorable and noble gambler you know like, what? like us and DraftKings. You know dirty what? Person. You know, we support dirty people. Person who gamble through accepted means. Go to DraftKings. Download the app right now. Uh, play some... Promo you, code Dan. Promo Same code game Dan. Right? Right? Like, <laughs> that's what we respect and accept. We don't respect people who go to a back alley, a shady guy with a toothpick in his mouth <laughs> and a fedora. That, I gotta that, be honest. That guy looks a lot <laughs> like Nick it. Wright, by the way. The guy you meet behind the Walmart <laughs> looks a little bit like Nick Wright. Dirty oh, person. <laughs> oh, wow. Anti-Italian stereotypes. Whoa. Wow. Wow. Wait, I mean, right? We're, we're really off the rails Whoa. here. Right is wow. an Italian name. You're Italian? Wow. If the you're Italian someone you know has a gambling problem, dad was a union president. All of a sudden, we're implying mob ties. That's nice. That's nice, Dan. <laughs> I'm gonna, like you, quoted, you, up. you quoted me from Twitter. <laughs> I'm going to quote you from earlier this segment. I have not oh, stolen man. anything. I have not stolen a goddamn thing. I stole one thing. <laughs>
That's something. Well, that's how you do it, Dan. That's something that you said yeah, at the yeah, start of this it. segment mm-hmm. after stealing. Yeah, some- that is again, <laughs> again. You know what? This is why Americans are losing faith in our institutions, most notably <laughs> journalism, because that is technically an accurate quote. But when you chop off the next couple sentences, which is where I say, and I admitted to stealing Greg Cody's Mac back in my day, I then went on Greg Cody's podcast and discussed it with him. That you need added context there that you guys are not you guys are not providing. This is unfortunate. Oh, you mean kind of like, like, you know, what? Every, where's Mike Ryan when you need him? <laughs> Okay. Well, I, I like the idea that you now you're talking about people chopped off things and kind of huh. slightly rearranged things to make it seem a certain way. Oh, you mean kind of like superstar club versus MVP bar? And here's the worst part: like the the, the imagery was tremendous by pure at pure hoops. Uh, what's his name? I don't he did know. A great his, job. What, what, what's his actual name? I want to shout him out by Jack name. Jack Perkins. Because I care about giving credit to people. Her. I don't just go around <laughs> just willy nilly, right? <laughs> Shout out to Joe Nilly. So, no, R.I.P. R.I.P. Bill, R. I. Bill, Bill Nilly. Bill, Bill, Bill Nilly. That's Bill that Nilly. Nilly. Joey was showing up. So he was showing up. Never shaved. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jack, shout out to you. <laughs> William Nilly. But what Jack drew was a literal interpretation of what the MVP bar was, which, by the way, Zach and I started way back in in the bubble because we had this, uh, or excuse me, in the days after the bubble when we were leading into the following season. Wait, so you started this segment a couple of years ago, is yes. what you're saying. Yes. Okay, and Nick just acknowledged that he started his a couple of months ago. I mean, yeah. that's a smoking right. gun if well, I've ever heard of one. Well, the conversations, Stu well, Listen, mean, I Jesus, tried to defend that, you, but that's inexcusable. Oh, I, yeah. I mean, but that's, but mm-hmm. it is not, okay. You know what? I thought we were friends, not yeah. just me and a mean. Mm. I would call me and a mean friendly colleagues. We haven't wow. spent enough time together. To well, you you didn't friends. narrow it down when you no, said we just you, I think you we, you said you'd had a cocktail with him, and I wanted to put on the poll. Put it on the poll, Guillermo. Has everyone had a cocktail with a mean? <laughs> That's not the question. The question is, has anyone had just <laughs> one cocktail with a mean? Right. <laughs> everyone in Miami last night. <laughs> oh my God, my eyes are burning right now. <laughs> so, but I I really thought. I, I really thought there were people in this room that, you know, like, let's say I, because Dan's right. I, I I have the habit to, you know, make a wager or two, some legitimate, some illegitimate. I have, you know, some vices. I would have thought 36 hours ago that if in a future scenario, I was really down on my luck and all of a sudden <laughs> found myself in Miami out of work, out of money, <laughs> that not only would Dan Levitard potentially offer me some employment, might even offer me a place to stay for a couple of days. Not his palatial estate, but I'm sure he has somebody, a flop house or two around town. Now I'm questioning it all. I looked at you as a mentor of such. <laughs> Fat face and all. He, uh, now he I can't. Put it on the poll, Guillermo, at Levitard show. <laughs> Is Nick Wright a grifter, but not this time? Wow. Here's- oh, yeah. All the vote, yes. <laughs> you put it on there. <laughs> oh, I'm down with that. You wear I just it like a want badge. exoneration yes. in this one instance. That's all I want. So here's the thing, guys. It, it goes a lot deeper than just Nick, right? Because first of all, Zach and I, as I said, oh. we've done this on Series 6 at NBA Radio a, a million times, all throughout the last two Literally seasons, right? And then also, I've introduced this thing here at Levitar Show multiple times, and I know Nick is a consumer of both of those. Maybe not an everyday consumer of Sirius XM NBA Radio, but he dabbles, right? And he consumes this podcast. But here's the other part that they don't want you to know about, and this is why you listen to Basketball Illuminati, because we tell you the things they don't want you to know about. Huh. I like that. Like hey, you're not bored of doing it. hey, Nick, do you have a co-host on the show that you do named Kevin Wilds? Yeah, of course. Okay. You know that. Yeah, I, I do know that. You know why I know that name, ladies and gentlemen, beyond him being on that show? Because Kevin Wilds was my producer oh my God. at The Jump. He was wow. the executive producer at The Jump. And so Kevin, I know, is a fan of my work and consumes it across a thief, variety of stuff. Thief, spec- grifter, and somebody who parlayed behind the scenes. No one ever wants to grow up to be a television executive. To boom, I'm going to go sit next to Nick Wright. I know what Nick Wright needs. Wow. I need What Nick Wright needs is me sitting next to him. And you know what they say. Once a producer... We call that the Dick Cheney. Who what? should we put in the seat? <laughs> How about me? That's unfair to Wilds. That's unfair. He wasn't even working for us when he got the job. That's unfair. I just want to take a Dick Cheney shot. Go ahead. Sorry. Dick Great shot. reference. Kevin Wilds, you know what they say, once a producer, 
O is a producer. Wow. So I submit to you. Is it possible? That Nick Wright didn't act alone. Wow. There was a man on the grassy knoll named Kevin Wilds who's out here saying, you know what, Nick? I've been listening, and I heard this one great take. It's about an MVP bar. And Nick said, that's a great idea, but we can't use that name. Clearly, we'll be, we'll is be it sued. Possi- is it possible that Nick Wright can uh, claim uh, just ignorance that he was manipulated by that producer grifter uh, wild? No, I'm not going to let this happen. I am not going to let all of a sudden my colleagues and coworkers be crushed under the weight of unfair accusations. Listen, I am a man of integrity in important spots. Am I a man of constant integrity? No. Am I a man that never lies? Of course not. However, there are certain lines we all have. And one of them is I would not, if I had stolen something and gotten caught, I simply would have tried to flip it. I simply would have lashed out at a meme. I would have said something. Is that not what's happening right heard. now? <laughs> no, no, that's not no, what's happening. Totally I'm defending different. myself. Yeah, yeah. I, it's totally different. Thank you, Billy. I appreciate that. Uh, so, no, I, I just want to know you believe me. That's all I care about at this point. I mean, it's you and me talking right now. Yeah. Dan, Dan I, ha- I have another kind of link here. Yeah. Another piece of yarn going yeah. from Nick Wright to another picture wow. on the on the bulletin board here. Wow. Wow. Pepe Silvia. No, uh, <laughs> Dan, is Chris Broussard another uh, co-host of yours, Nick Wright, on First Things First? Uh-oh. He is. Don't take a shot at Bruce. Uh-oh. I'm not taking a shot, Chris Bruce. Bruce. That's where he draws the line. Careful. I mean, now, I, I, very careful. Let me just say right now, I respect Chris Broussard very, very much. I have played basketball with Chris Broussard. What does that mean? I've played basketball with him. Uh, this is someone I. This is someone I consider close to me in the industry. But Chris Broussard also, I believe, to be someone who consumes Mina Hassan content. I know he does a podcast with Rob Parker. And I know Rob Parker, Radio. whenever I'm at a game and I see Rob Parker, he comes up to me and he says, Amin, how's it going? Love your stuff. Handshakes, hugs. And I love Rob Parker. I love Chris Boussard. Wow. But I do know they keep track and tabs of kind of the stuff we do. Huh. And so is it possible? Is it possible? I asked the court that in a show where Nick Wright, alleged friend of Amin, I don't know anymore after he's been talking the way he's been talking, wow. yeah. Kevin Wilds, Former boss of Amin wow. loves Amin's takes, wow. and Nick and uh, Chris Broussard, who loves Amin yeah. and has worked with Amin yeah. in the past and played yeah. basketball with Amin. That's right. That yeah. all three of them could collude and come up with an idea that is almost exactly the same as MVP bar, right. but just tweaked a little bit. Oh, yeah. they have one in, one out. Oh, yeah. so different, so That's different. different. Oh, you know what, Nick? We have a saying on Basketball Illuminati: we don't accuse the league of of, of shady behavior. We merely ask questions, and if qu- and if questions make them so uncomfortable, they need to explain it. I have a question. If there's no one in, one out rule in the MVP bar, that's right. Then is this not just the Basketball Hall of Fame? Absolutely not. Look, you have nuked I mean, this entire the, you've exactly, nuked this entire beef saying. with your question. Mm-hmm. So I want to talk to Nick Wright about some of the things happening in sports. We will continue to deliberate some of this and get some finality, but I should tell you to promote Nick Wright's new podcast, What's Right. It's a podcast where Nick uh, tries to yeah. ascertain whether movies that were poorly rated or perhaps uh, ascertain wow. <laughs> yes. whether uh, whether yeah. they were poorly properly pod. rated yeah. or perhaps they didn't get a fair shake produced by Kevin and wilds uh you can check out <laughs> what's right wherever it is that you get your podcast this is wrong this uh, is wrong <laughs> this is just wrong nick i wanted to get your thoughts on phil mickelson because you're a dirty person oh. and a gambler uh God, with- <laughs> dog. okay you're an expert yeah, I, I say mean- 40 million is way low so here's why you uh, so here's why so i so phil mickelson was named in that indictment with Billy Walters, right? We know this. Uh, Billy Walters, if people don't know, is arguably the greatest sports gambler of all time. So those are things we that there's established facts. One one would think, and I think I have, I don't want to be accused of stealing anything, but I also don't want to be uh, misquoting someone. I know I have read somewhere by someone who would know that there is some speculation that at one point in time, Phil Mickelson acted as Billy Walter's beard. Do people know what that is? 
So for if you're a great gambler, you get – so a great gambler is like, hey, Floyd Mayweather, put down this million bucks for me because the uh, casinos won't take it from me. They'll take it from you. If that's true, then if, if they came up with $40 million in losses, that probably means – you know, won sixty million of bets, lost a hundred million of bets, minus forty million. But a lot of those winnings weren't his. I would postulate a lot of those winnings were going. He were bets he was placing for someone else. So I'm guessing the forty million is low. I'm guessing he lost way, way, way more than that. If you're to the, how much does his caddy make? If you're to the point where you're allegedly stiffing people over hundreds of thousands of dollars, it's not because you still have millions. And so, yeah, I think it's a problem. I think it's a big problem. How bad, though, when you talk about trying to team up with the Saudis because you appear... I think probably net worth negative would be my guess. And how... Hey, that would be... A, how does one get to the right. point that they're gambling that amount of money? Like, what, uh, that someone can... Uh, I've talked about this before. Let me just tell you, Dan. So here's the thing. There's a lot of vices in this world. So let's just talk about a drug problem like for theft. a moment, okay? So, like, theft... How dare you? <laughs> so here, so here's the here's the thing. In your moment of sobriety, if you have a drug problem, you know that on the other side of this eight ball, I have less money and I'm less healthy and I'm less happy. But you still like you need it so badly you're addicted, you want it. The problem once you're in deep with gambling is you have the moment you're like, should I stop betting? And it's like, well, on the other side of this bet. I might have more money <laughs> and be more happy. That doesn't happen. Nobody's like, I'm going to snort this line of Coke and be richer. That doesn't happen. And so, yeah, I mean, I think I, the, I, who's the, oh, I'll tell you someone that I'm legit concerned about. I, and he's got probably over a hundred million bucks. I think, I think Drake is playing with fire. Drake's posting hundred thousand dollar roulette spins. I, I don't care how much money you have when you're gambling at that level at, at that often. That's one of the few ways that a nine figure net worth can draw to zero. I thought so, I thought that about Floyd Mayweather for a while because he only posts his winnings, but he's always making these absurd bets. And no matter how much money you make, but he could still earn when he was doing it. Yes, he you could know? still earn, but you will blow through that money. And yet, still, I felt a little naive, uh, Nick, being aghast at the figures thrown around with Phil Mickelson because I have not heard those kind of figures before with an athlete. Those kinds of numbers. Oh, that didn't. It, I, it didn't shock me at all. I mean, I think there was a th there was a clear obviousness that he had a massive gambling problem. And by the way, just because I'm so mad at today's show, a uh, spoiler alert for people out there who haven't done today's Oct Turtle, but since Chris Whittingham has lost all interest in the segment, pupil round slice Whoa, felon no, shape no, eye no. dimly aroma. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking here. I'm giving great analysis. Can you pull up October? I realized. I realized when I when I looked at my go to uh, hell, buddy. When I looked at the zoo, <laughs> yeah, you can see you can see my October window. Damn it! Yeah, of course I can. <laughs> I mean, what type of pirate ship are you running here, Levitan? <laughs> one one world. where everyone does what they want to do, including a mean showing up late and drunk and accusing you of all, you of theft. all manner of theft. <laughs> this is who you guys want to defend, by the way. Just want to throw that out there. This is this is the guy you guys were all defending yesterday. Can Can I say one thing that I? Because I, I do have to go in a moment. Uh, can I uh, can I say something defending Chris Russo for a moment? Do Please. you guys care about that story or no? Yeah. Okay. So the whole internet is on JJ's side. Here is what I, because I, you know, I worked with Russo. The backstory for I those did, who do not know, yeah. JJ Reddick had a sure. viral moment where he went after Chris Russo on something shut up and dribble related as it regarded to Draymond Green being polarizing and always saying things and just play basketball and be great at basketball. And it, and and he implied that Mad Dog was being racist. Okay. So here is and and Dan, I think my bona fides on being on the right side of uh, if it is. Know, racial discussions in this country are legit. And I think I've done it on this show. But I also know Mad Dog. And here's my take on it. And as someone who's been in the space, tell me what you think. So when you bring Mad Dog on, you have to know 
who he is, what his opinions are going to be, how he's going to present them. I've consumed Mad Dog. I did the radio show after Mad Dog. I, I know Stu Gatz is a huge Mad Dog fan. Mad Dog is a great human being. Mad Dog also is a 60-something-year-old man who is going to present things that if you don't know him and know his history could come across as woefully out of touch. Those things are all true, which is why him with Stephen A makes sense because Stephen A is going to protect him and not make him step on these landmines. The episode before first take, they had this mad dog and JJ got into it about Bob Cousy and the internet loved it. And I'm sure what happened is they're like, Oh, let's try to recreate that. But the moment you try to recreate that and you bring in someone as good as JJ is, who's not familiar with mad dog shtick, with Mad Dog's work, with who he is, you are going, you are leading yourself down this path. And I felt terribly for Mad Dog in this spot. He, I, I felt like he got totally hosed. And if I were him, I'd be furious. Like I, I came here to argue with Stephen A. Now I'm having, I'm basically getting called half a racist by JJ Reddick when I, I don't think that's, I think Mad Dog, it, I think his opinions on athletes talking are insane. However, he's screaming. You guys played the clip for years. He was screaming about Tom Brady's yeah, Tom they're, Brady they're shut your mouth. Tom Brady, come on here. Right? They're consistent. He he doesn't he doesn't think athletes should have a voice. Now that's insane, but it's it's what he's always been. And it got presented like he was saying black athletes shouldn't have a voice. I thought it was unfair. Well, but one of the things I, I, happening there that is the source of the tension between Draymond and the symbol of Draymond and the symbol of Mad Dog is that Mad Dog believes he should have the voice and that Draymond shouldn't have the voice. And Draymond is here saying, no, I'm the new media now. Get out of the way. My words are the ones that matter. Dan, I Which just want to... Total- yeah, go ahead. Start. I'm sorry. Ahead. I want to point out that Nick made a very cogent point there. It was well thought. It was uh, nuanced. I also want to point out that Stu guys made the same point a week ago. Yep. Really? Yahtzee. I mean, you uh, <laughs> you continue to be accused. You, have, I know it's he terrible. Uh, thank you, Nick, thank for you, being I mean, on with us. I had, I yeah. did you know what? And also, well done for watching uh, first take instead of undisputed. Great teammate. What a great team. <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Do Wagyu. we know who's in the superstar club? Like, is Jimmy Butler now in both of your clubs, your club and his stolen club? Jason Tatum is in both clubs now, uh, your club and the Nick Wright uh, bar or whatever it is. The it's differences only a means are between club. The two. I mean, that's it. It's right. it's my establishment. Me and Zach Harper are co-owners. We came up with this. Uh, our thing is actually a little bit more exclusive. Nick has all these people coming in and out. Ours is exclusive. It's a... MVP bar because it came out of this. This is the thing I didn't explain in the last segment. It came out of people saying, well, he should be in the MVP conversation. And Zach and I were just so upset and frustrated. Like, what the hell does that mean? An MVP conversation? What are they? A bunch of guys all talking. And if you're in the conversation, you're one of the people talking. That's exactly and, what it is. So we, yeah. we fleshed it out. We made it into a bar. And then to get into the bar, there's a bouncer. And the bouncer says, no, 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 you're not ready yet. You know, And there are guys that were like too young, right? Like So, uh, for instance, John Morant, a little too young to get into the conversation, right? Like he's t- showing a fake ID, and the bouncer's like, come back later, kid, right? <laughs> then there are people who are always in the conversation, like LeBron and, and, and Steph Curry. They're always there, and they're, you know, they're having a drink, and they're having a good time. The person who's leading the conversation is the person who's in the middle, right? Everyone's in a circle, and then the one guy's telling a story. And so, for instance, this season— Embiid and Jokic were going back and forth. Like, I got a better story than that. And everyone's wrapped in an attention, right? And then, like, so last season when uh, Julius Randle had a great year, mm-hmm. we said, he's in the bar, but he's got a table all the way on the other side of, of the bar. And he's saying, I don't need your conversation. I got my own conversation uh, going on over here. He's handing out mints in the bathroom. But he made it inside the club. How he, many oh, people are in your bar? And who's standing on the wall? Who's, who's holding up the wall? Yeah, it was Kawhi Leonard a season ago. He was right. he was just quietly sipping, and he's like, "All right, whatever." Right? Giannis also kind of started with just leaning back and watching, and then at some point he started to insert himself in the conversation. Like, Let me guy, tell you guys a story. And so when he was what, leaning back, though, he was playing it cool, like he knew, right? Exactly. Okay, good. Exactly. Yeah. Where's but, Tatum in the conversation? Well, Tatum, Tatum this year started with trying to get in. 
and the bouncer like, I don't know, and he had to call somebody inside, and then they finally let him in. The other thing that happens is, so you know, you guys know when guys play well, they play great, and they're like MVP caliber, but your team is only has like is a forty win team or whatever. That when that is represented by a guy being in the conversation, but not having enough funds wins to buy a drink so you just got to nurse that one drink so you know sometimes <laughs> what happens is when a team takes off in the middle of the year that's a direct deposit that hit right at midnight like yeah we're back baby <laughs> buying drinks what is your problem with rendon billing the bone i have to pick with him i mean there was a no hitter yesterday and all anybody's talking about is this rendon did you see what he did well, it's why, all anybody's talking why about. are bones picked do we know why why it is that the origins of someone i'm on it Having a bone Thank to you. pick. Uh, go <laughs> ahead. I did not see what happened with Rendon last night that everyone is talking Rendon. about. Everybody's talking about it. Yeah, it's a good one, Stigatz. So he's a uh, he's a right-handed hitter, Dan, as you well know. Anthony Rendon. He now plays for the Angels, the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. As you heard, there ended up being a no hitter. But before there was a no hitter, Brett Phillips came in to pitch, which is this trick that the Rays do like six times a year, where they send him out like this circus clown to pitch in games that they're getting Why blown out by. Clown? Because he's a position player, but every time the Rays are down by like three runs, they decide, let's put Brett Phillips out there to have people forget about the fact that we're getting blown out. So they did that yesterday, and then Rendon said, you know what, if we're at the circus, I might as well act up as well. So he, as we pointed out previously, is a right-handed hitter and decided, you know what, I'm going to bat left-handed this at bat. And you know what he did? He had a two-run bomb to, <laughs> to right center field. Impressive, man. Why do you not like that? That's great. Well, because now no one's talking about the no-hitter. They're just talking about this <laughs> Rendon no and the That's circus that he made about baseball. No, he's yeah. never hit lefty before? No, ever? it's first at bat. And I hope he never does again, by the way. just Because because now this is going to be his party trick, his little circus trick where he's like, oh, I'm going to go hit a lefty and I'm going to hit a home run again, and he's not. So like, just quit while you're ahead, Anthony Rendon, and just stay with that one at bat where you hit a home run. Yeah, it's a pretty homer. great party trick. Uh, yeah. I want to get to the Tom Brady contract because we left yesterday and we had a value half as much of the value Jesus. as what it was actually worth. The team should have mobbed Rendon after the game. I mean, that is more impressive. Uh, put it on the poll, please, Guillermo. At Lebitard Show, what's more impressive, throwing a throwing a no-hitter or hitting a home run from the left side when you're right-handed? I did that in a pickup game. Like It's not that complicated. In a you know pickup what I mean? game of what? Baseball. A baseball pickup game? Yeah. That, when was that? The so this is this is the way that it works because... You had 18 people who no, walk around and say, hey, here's a pickup game. No, 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 no. You didn't... He's got no, a no. bullpen. Sandlot? Like, guys, what are these? <laughs> you guys sound silly. Was That's, there a dog in the back <laughs> that ate the ball too? That's not guy how pickup showed up, game he was works. a setup man. <laughs> Let him explain. He's May I finish? A lefty specialist. You get catcher's mitt, like just a, the gear, everything. No. So the way that it works is you don't have enough people. So you could play a pickup baseball game with like eight people, right? Eight people. Yeah, eight people. You have like little four on four. You, no, no. Every man for himself. Oh wow. Each person's their own what? team. Wow. That's right. Inside the bar, but you only day. play with like one out. So like you're up there until you make an out. And then you have someone pitching to you, you're hitting, you have someone at first, wow. someone like at second, third, shortstop, and then you have like two outfielders. You can only do it with like half a team, and then you're just hitting around until you get an out. Very efficient. No one's throwing 90 miles an hour. It's a little pickup game. Pickup you know I mean? baseball. Yeah. Let's get to these top five lists. Who has top five thieves lists? Because Stugat, you were threatening me with dueling top five lists. Uh, I have one. I think Amin also has one. I did. I All did. right. And I, I have top five things to get scared out of you and the oh, origins wow. of uh, Bone to Pick. I also have top five things wow. to get scared out of you. Wow. Okay. Well, this is a lot to get to then. It doesn't Daylight's sound like we're going to have any time to get to Tom Brady and uh, the 10 year, uh, he's rich, uh, <laughs> $375 million <laughs> contract that he will get for part time work uh i cannot help. we have a theory on that by the way we can get to that tomorrow no or please. never no please yeah. go ahead well so we think this 10 year as you saw there was no specific language as to when it starts just when he ends right his career not it's, his life it really is such yeah. a great deal for a part-time job with no experience i was trying to rack my brain to find out how often anywhere in money you can find someone who makes $375 million for something that they have never done before. 
never done before. Like, has we have no proof that he's any good at it. None, and it's he's going to be good. And at it's it. well, we okay. need proof. And it's yeah, twice I mean, as much as anyone everything. has ever made at life. It, 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 agreed. He all, silly. all of it is amazing. Many of you decided Don't yesterday it, that Stephen A. Smith was underpaid because you saw well, Jim Rome is. was yeah. making thirty million dollars a what? year. What? Rome was, is burning. <laughs> I was thinking about this. Do you think that now, like the sixth announcer at CBS is going to be like stroll into an office and start asking for f- a few mil? Yes. Like James Lofton is going to stroll into the CBS James Sports offices Lofton. and he's going to be like, "Listen, it's three mil or I'm out." Rising tide. <laughs> I, you don't think Barkley noticed what yesterday? What yesterday was? Enough with him. Retire, don't already. Okay. Wow. I thought he wanted oh, to Jesus. retire. He was trying to retire. You you said this wasn't about the money with Barkley. He just wants to retire. He doesn't need to do it anymore. So retire. Okay. Now's not the time. Right. You were saying? Oh yeah. So I thought that this that this Brady thing. I thought you know it's Stugatz, and I made the mistake. I told Stugatz, I go Stugatz. I think this puts an end to our Brady's coming to the Dolphins thing, three hundred seventy-five million dollars. <laughs> but I saved it. Yeah, to which yeah. he quickly informed me I was very wrong about wow. that, and that's not the case. Because, well, Dan, here's the deal: Brady is going to win a Super Bowl at Tampa Bay this year. The Super Bowl is not on Fox for another two years. Okay, so my theory—it's not really a theory; it's what's going to happen. Brady wins a Super Bowl with the Bucks, comes to the Dolphins. Wins a Super Bowl in Miami, the coveted Super Bowl in Miami in a Bill Belichick division. Okay, beats the Bills, beats everyone, wins the Super Bowl. Then the next year, Dan, the Super Bowl airs on Fox. <laughs> Strolls Three right into the straight booth. Super Bowls for mm-hmm. Tommy. Mm-hmm. A couple of fun things that I saw yesterday yeah. um, from people who were analyzing every aspect like it. <laughs> of this from every angle. Fox paid four hundred million dollars for the rights to the NFC games. The entire NFC schedule one time at at Fox cost four hundred million dollars, and the only people in broadcasting right now making more, according to Darren Ravel, than Tom Brady, who has never done it before, are Judge Judy and Oprah. In wow. in all of in all of broadcasting but let's get to our top five Amazing. list top five saying lists. we need to get into daytime syndication <laughs> that's, oh, what that, that's judge what brady is. <laughs> oh judge wow. brady, judge brady. Yeah. Wow. and brady. he's gonna have time also yeah, yeah. wait 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 do you guys have uh gronk as the bailiff that he cracks jokes with in yes between? Yep. Oh. <laughs> that's a good call <laughs> top five thieves number five Stu gots miami Number five, Amin. Nick Wright. <laughs> Number four, Stugatz. <laughs> Robin Hood. The Prince of Thieves. Number four, Amin. Nicky Wright. <laughs> Number three, Stugatz. The ex president, Dano. Number three, Amin. Nicholas Wright. Number two, Stugatz. Oh, man, I agonized over this. Mm. Nick writes. Number two, I mean. Nick with a C, right? <laughs> I thought number two was Christmas. Number one, Stugatz. Stugatz. Number one, I mean. Nicola, right? <laughs> what are the origins of Bone to Pick, Chris Whittingham? The origins of bone to pick are related to dogs eating bones, and they would go all the way down to the bone, and thus was born the phrase bone to pick. Mm. And so this or this uh, phrase dates all the way back to the 1500s. And you will eat something until you've arrived at the bone? So if you have a bone to pick with Nick Wright, you will you will cannibalize him until you've arrived at the bone. At the bones, yeah. And now you have a hierarchy or a top five of uh, things to have scared out of you. I left out the Tindler, uh, Tindler Swindler. That's your OLI? There it is. I my, did it for you. My, <laughs> my OLI was Nickelodeon Wright. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. What? what? That is some BS, man. Number five, Whittingham. Well, we'll start with the OLI, which is crap. 
have the crap scared out of you. Oh, yeah, it's bad. That's my whole life. Number five. Daylights. Love daylights. Number four. Shit. Yeah. Number three. Devil. Devil. No way. Too high. It's his list. It's It's his list. Number two. Christmas. (laughs) But it's actually Dickens. (laughs) Dickens. He loves that. No, and, but Jesus, huh? And, well, I think it's coming, number one. Number one. Bejeebers. Oh, bejeebers! <laughs> Shocking. Can I respond? You have a top five? I do have a top five. Wow. My OLI is also crap, by Are the way. Are we doing too many of these? Number Probably. five. Dickens. Number four. Bejesus. Oh. Number three. Daylights. Num- number two. Shit. Number one, the ever loving fuck. It's a good one. Good one. Not bad. What's the answer to your question, Billy? Are we doing too Tinders. many of these? I don't know. We'll do it. We'll do tomorrow top five things we run into the ground. Finally, your first list. Top five, top five list. I think we've <laughs> oh. actually done that already. Oh, I think oh. we've actually it done was top, top five, five. Tony's worst worst top five list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am not someone. I am not someone who begrudges anybody their ability to make money. But that was a pretty seismic thing that happened yesterday. Because it's not just that it's a part-time job. It's not just that Tom Brady hasn't done it very much. It's also, as an added bonus, the fact that the CEO of Metal Lark has told you that these people don't actually move the needle. That none of them move the needle appreciably that this is all about football getting in and television getting into a war of ego and Fox couldn't just lose Buck and Aikman without countering. And now you wonder if ESPN looks up and is like, Oh wait, we took Buck and Aikman something made by them and they just one upped us because they had to go pay to one up us by going and getting the guy that nobody thought would necessarily be in a booth because he was too much above the fray to ever be in a booth. He would never travel around every week, even 16 weeks a season, to be merely Troy Aikman. He's right. above that. Uh, all of it, I thought, was sort of a seismic shaking of the money does not matter around here. It's not even about worth of anything. It's just get your name out in front of people because of ego, pedigree, framing, accent, and how the NFL wants to be represented. That we will put the voices till tomorrow... The bridge to tomorrow, we will pay $375 million to have his voice, his face, usher in a new wave of fan over the next 10 years by giving them the same permission that Terry Bradshaw and all these other hired quarterbacks turned broadcasters. He's worth every penny. But I would ask you this. Are you saying ESPN sitting back going, oh, we could have had Tom Brady? They tried to get him, but didn't have room for him. They tried to get him and didn't have a place to put him because they already got the Mannings and they've got everybody else. It's not like uh, Tom Brady. Brady's agent just went to one person with this. He got it up to $375 million because money's being spilled all over the place with people in broadcasting fighting over all the white legends. If I put the line at two and a half, how many years before he quits? Because he's not doing 10 years. I promise you he's not going to do 10 years. Do we know exactly what he's doing? Like, there could be a larger role, television role for Tom. Well, he's got a whole I content mean, he's doing company. Now. Look, I mean, what he's doing is the same thing he did for 23 years playing when he didn't make this money. It's conquering. He wants to conquer. He's going to want to conquer the next 20 years. He's going to do it with a part-time job that he's still got. I want the audience to understand how absurd it is for anyone to get $375 million for something that no one has any proof. Tom Brady's not fun or interesting in front of a microphone, Stugat. They just gave $375 million to somebody who's never said anything interesting. Whose name is Tom Brady, though? Who's the greatest football player to ever live? But and the- that that guy, Dan, as you just pointed out, rarely you know goes for opportunities like this. You don't see Joe Montana doing it. You don't see... This level of quarterback, Michael Jordan didn't do it, but the money has never been like this. It's easy. So not saying that he would do it, but if we said to Michael Jordan right now, yo, Tom Brady got 375 to 17 weeks a year, basically. How much do you think Michael Jordan could command? If which, he were willing to but do But which is the job, right? Because they are working the hell out of Dwayne Wade and Charles Barkley. They've got to no, go. No, 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 not working the hell out of Dwayne Wade. Do you have Jordan calling football games? I mean. 
because I'd pay him whatever I'd be he wants. On that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, how much work? This is one of the easiest jobs in broadcasting, sitting next to another professional and just being Tom Brady. Mm -hmm. Charles Barkley's got to work for his money. Charles yes. Barkley doesn't get days off. Charles Barkley will work more games, Stugatz, in a month than Tom Brady's going to work the entire NFL season. But it's a different role. He's a, you know, in studio analyst it's for more pre work, half and but post. It's more I know he's there and laughing right. at things. Like he's not doing research. I and mean, we've seen his coverage of March Madness. Like, Charles Barkley's good at what he does, but he's not exactly breaking down. His tape job is to show games. up and be Charles Barkley, and he's being he's got to work a lot harder. He's got to put in more hours for the pay than Tom Brady will have to put in. But the games, that's what people are watching, Dan. I'm not saying they're not watching the pregame and the postgame, but they're watching the well, game. It's football. You know? The reason these salaries won't be found anywhere but football. They're not going to be allowed to exist anywhere but football. Football, look, man, this is the television partners working on behalf of football to make Make football bigger and to help football five years from now in the transition because Tom Brady has co-signed on I will go every Sunday and I will lend all of my aura to this big giant thing that has become religion in this country on Sundays which is the only big remaining television events that we have every week I, I do I, it does make me start to wonder is the I guess theory that John Skipper puts out there that these guys don't have value like at one point do we start to ask ourselves, is there a value that we're missing? Because it's stunning that Amazon Prime, ESPN, now Fox, CBS gave a shed load of money to Tony Romo as well. NBC, you know, like they, they were ready to go for Breeze. It didn't work out, so they're going to stick with Collinsworth and Tarico. But all of the major booths have gone for huge money no, upgrades. No, but it's not, it's not, I think you're reading but, it wrong. But what is the value that we're missing? No, I, I don't think it's value that you're missing. I believe that the way that we do measurements on value is do they draw eyeballs or whatever? That's not the way they're doing measurements. The way they're doing measurements are we have so much money, we will not recoup this. We will lose money here and it doesn't matter because we are getting what we just got yesterday was a whole lot of advertising that Fox is back in the game in broadcasting because they got a day's worth of advertising on Tom Brady has lent his name and credibility to this, and you're talking about so much money that even if you could get the same broadcaster for many hundreds of millions of dollars less, the television dollars are so large that the loss of that money doesn't matter, that the people that are losing that money don't care that they're overspending there because football itself as an entity brings so much money all over the place and credibility to your network that that's money in the margins, even for Tom Brady and even as you're aghast at the idea that $375 million sounds like a lot of money to you, but when you're paying billions of dollars in television rights because you don't mind losing the money, because if you're ESPN, you're not even paying for the Monday night game. What you're paying for is to have football highlights across your network the entire week to be able to use everything over the week to fuel your network and to tell everyone you're a television partner. And, and you're buying the value is in legitimacy. That's what you're getting. You're saying we are a legitimate out, outlet. Credibility. How, but credibility. If exactly. Kevin Burkhart and Greg Olson was your booth, it would be really good. It would draw good media criticism. It's not Tom Brady. I know, but but what? But what's the difference in that value? Greg Olson worth worth eight nine million quid a year. Like you know, is is is, is four times that amount for Tom Brady? Really? You that shook your head in the same place there. You shook your head. <laughs> God damn it! Because he didn't he, he didn't have to do that. You didn't have I mean, to he does do it quid. all the time. Quid was no, like unnecessary. That, but that was a real shoehorn. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. Quid, it's quid, natural it's the money for him. That it quid, cost. quid was natural. not necessary. <laughs> it was. Chris Whittingham is a fancy lad.